Hey friends, hello and welcome. It's time to dig on into the serverless application model. I'm getting excited. It's one of my favorite tools within the AWS catalog and it's got a lot of interesting value propositions um, and differentiators compared to other infrastructure as code options within AWS. So let's start in this little lesson up front here to ask why do we care about SAM and what's the value that's at stake here? Keep in mind here, friends, that the serverless application model really has two different key offerings behind it. The first is the SAM specification, which is really just an extension of the CloudFormation model. So we're talking about CloudFormation templates that use what's called a transform on top of it to extend what CloudFormation does already. And as you might imagine, in true AWS form, the model is all about simplifying the amount of work required for developers and operations folks to get serverless applications up and running. Remember that if you're gonna run Lambda functions, API gateways, and deploy and inter interact with them on an ongoing basis, there's a lot of infrastructure in the background that has to be built as a part of that. SAM gives us mechanisms within the CloudFormation model that shortcut a lot of the other resources that we'd have to make. So let's go ahead and jump on over here to Google and we can take a look at some of the big value adds. So if we do a real quick Google for AWS SAM resources, that's a good place to get started. Uh, look for the one that says SAM resource property and reference. Excellent. So digging on in here, you can see that they support a variety of resources that are very similar to what uh, the CloudFormation world offers, APIs, applications, a function. Uh, there's a special resource for HTTP API, and then there's layer, simple table, and state machine. And really what these are are existing AWS services. Like for example, simple table is an extension for DynamoDB. Serverless function is an extension for the Lambda function. And API is an extension for the REST API constructs that already exist out there in the AWS world. So what's the real big value add here? You can already write these pieces within CloudFormation. Well, dig a little deeper over on the left here and look down underneath of generated resources and you can get a quick look at what they're doing in the background. So for example, if you take a look at the one here that says serverless API generated resources, dig on in a little bit deeper. When you create a quote unquote serverless API resource within a SAM template, AWS is actually gonna be building multiple resources for you in the background. They're gonna build the REST API they're also gonna set up stages where you can deploy uh, the API, and then they're actually gonna create the deployment resource itself. It's important to keep in mind here, friends, that when we think about CloudFormation, even activities like deploying something, that is known as a resource. It's an action that you're asking CloudFormation to perform for you. Creating the namespace for the API and then deploying content to it are separate activities. And Sam understands this and provides that mechanism on top of CloudFormation. This is just one of the shortcuts to kind of help us get started. And so continuing on, if we look over here on the left under serverless function, uh, the special SAM resource, and look a little deeper, of course, they let us create Lambda functions. And then furthermore, they also allow for alias, versioning, and then security permission roles to be created as well, all of which have useful shortcuts that they've created inside of it. Because like we mentioned a minute ago, when you think about what Lambda does functionally, sure, the code that it runs is one part of the mechanism, but it's not the complete picture. You're talking about the ability to identify the role, uh, change it out and update and manage its life cycle through the background using things like an alias on top of it, which we discuss elsewhere in the catalog. And then also keeping in mind the complex permission schemes that Lambda supports as well. Remember that in order to invoke a Lambda function, another application like API Gateway has to have permission to call on the Lambda function. Furthermore, Lambda functions themselves need to have permissions um, associated with them to allow them to go and invoke other AWS services as well. So Sam is giving us some useful constructs to shortcut the amount of effort required here so that I don't have to go and hand write uh, the IAM property, I don't have to hand write the alias part of it, I don't have to hand write the version parts of it in the CloudFormation template. Instead, I can use the shortcut references within the AWS Sam resources um, and then that special transform piece, which we'll look at more here in just a few minutes to perform that functionality with a whole lot less code writing. And that's the value proposition that we've been talking about, simplifying the effort required to get these applications up and running. Continuing on too, if you take a look over here at uh, HTTP API, similar story. They're gonna build the stage for you. And if you don't specify the stage, they're gonna go ahead and deploy it using a default stage. And they also have the ability to, of course, bake in domain names as well. And in the end, friends, this really means that there's a whole lot less code for us to write to get these types of resources up and running. Let's dig a little bit deeper. And so over on the left, if you collapse generated resources and head on up here to resource property reference and then drill on into the AWS serverless function itself, you can get a good look at the properties, uh, the full list of properties available for the serverless function resource. 
Uh, one in particular I wanted to call out is the policy section. So if you drill on down to policies, you can see this is all about assigning permissions to the Lambda function or to other services that might need to interact with the function. The cool thing is once again, they've shortcutted this by creating SAM policy templates that allow you to control what permissions look like, you know, either for invoking or for interacting with other services outside of the function. A good example would be like the SQS Polar policy. You can see the DynamoDB ones. There's quite a long list of different policies available for S3, working with EC2, KMS, VPCs, pretty much all of the other AWS services that Lambda currently integrates well with. And if you drill on in, you can see that they're basically just um, IAM policies that are here, but you can make a simple reference within the SAM template to call them out. And so in the end, as you'll see coming up in the next couple of videos here, using the SAM template construct allows us to shortcut the amount of work we would have to normally do to write the CloudFormation templates. The interesting thing for me too is to keep in mind that what happens in the background is when you use the SAM tools like SAM CLI to go and deploy a SAM application, it's actually transforming the template into a CloudFormation template and then giving it to CloudFormation for you. So this is another interesting example of the integration that AWS makes possible using the existing tools that are out there with slight augmentation Implementations on top of it. In fact, if you've watched other lessons that I presented here, you've seen me talk about transforms and the use of AWS CloudFormation custom resources to extend the powerful functionality of CloudFormation's infrastructure as code. So stick with me, friends. In the next couple lessons, we'll get a simple little Hello World application deployed, and we'll start working with some of the template constructs and showing you some of the background mechanisms of how SAM CLI deploys and manages your applications, and of course, how you can test and interact with them and use them in the Cloud9 dashboard. We'll see you there.